Hello. Hi there. We have a, a hyperledger wiki down today. <clears throat> Barely was able to scrap the link for the Zoom meeting. Luckily, Miro saved me. He had it. So, <laughs> so I, I successfully connected. Did you say the hyperledger wiki was down or something? Yeah, it still doesn't work. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I see we have a, a new 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 newcomer here. Hello, Innocence Autopilot. And uh, let's give it that. A minute or two more, and then we can start. Hello. Hi, Nan. We're just waiting okay. for uh, for everybody to connect, and I'll be starting in a in a in a short moment. Okay. All right. Yes, I I wasn't hearing anything, so got it. Yeah, yeah. It's your first time, right? So it's all good. I'll see how it how it goes. It's um actually uh it's uh unusually um uh, a rich meeting in terms of um uh people connected i think this might be the the historical record it's usually not that no not, not that many people um oh yeah and uh and uh and swapter is uh asking for a link so we'll have one more person coming in here Okay, so I'm just reading what is this Innocence Otter Pilot writing to the chat. Apparently it's a bot which is taking notes and it seems like some sort of app. I don't think we need this. I think it's uh, the the recordings from Hyperledger are already automatically uh, transcribed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this this bot if it's possible. It doesn't look like it's possible. So I guess we'll just have to leave with that. All right. So let's get started. Uh, I'll share my screen. Uh, we don't have. We don't have the uh
we don't have the wiki working so i'll just i oh am i still here yeah i'm here i'm sorry for confusion here i confused myself uh there we go sorry uh okay okay there we are Just a second, I'm really apologies for um messy start. All right. Your screen. Here we go. Okay. And I can't get rid of this. Um screen right here right now what's going on okay i'll just move it here okay so starting starting with the the i believe you entered this policy notice uh, i'll just uh, give it a short uh, moment to uh, read this All right, I think that's good. So yeah, welcome to um, 29th of June, 2023, Aries V6 community call. Uh, today we have an offline agenda here in a in a, a notepad. Uh, so um, uh, I see that uh, we have some new 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 faces here, or new new nicknames. Better to say. Uh, so uh, if if you would like to uh, do a short uh, round of introductions, just just go ahead. If you would like to stay under a shade of anonymity, uh, you can just uh, stay quiet and uh, and uh, just just leave it. So if you would like to introduce yourself, you can do so now if you are connected for the first time. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm myself Abhishek, and uh, uh, I'm representing Instant uh, Organization from myself, and we I'm trying to understand the VCX uh, framework development in iOS and Android. So that's why I joined this call. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go ahead. So uh, yeah, uh, um, the second uh, point in the start meeting discussions, Libby six notice. Uh, I just saw some discussions pouring out on the on the, on, on Discord about the Libby six iOS and and uh, and Java. I just wanted to like put it out out there one more time, kind of verbally on this meeting. If somebody's watching on YouTube, I just wanted to. Make sure that uh, it's uh, it's like uh, that every, everyone involved is is aware of the status of the Libby six iOS iOS and Java, and uh, that there are like uh, different recommended ways how to how to proceed. Uh, nevertheless, I, I left the Discord message. Maybe Abhishek, um, it, it 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 might be relevant for you. Uh, Perhaps like before we like dive in into other stuff around kind of a more mundane part of the meeting where we discuss like the, the technical stuff about work we've done and work we're planning. We can we can talk a little bit about uh, Libby CX because uh, it, it seems like that's the, that's the main point of your interest right now. How to how to build iOS and java applications so so what's your what's your have you have you tried to work with the libby cx yet or are you just looking around what's your what's your kind of state you know status uh actually i downloaded the uh ios sample demo from your mm -hmm. uh 
and uh, I was able to run it in simulator in Rosetta mode. Uh, now I'm trying to understand how to, uh, to provide the config. So for example, all the IP address and uh, wallet key and credentials. So I need, I'm, I'm trying to understand that how to provide the exact values or how to run the mediator in uh, public IP. So that's where I'm uh, at the moment. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I guess you, you had some of the, did, did you post any messages on the Discord? Yes, yes. Uh, in the in, uh, scroll bit, bit down, bit down. Yes, I'll be there. This, this one, I'll be ah, there. Yes. I'll be there. Oh, okay. I see. Right. So you, you are using the, uh, the demo from, S as this was done a few years ago by uh, SK Telecom in, in Korea. Uh, so, so, you, so you are actually successfully run this, correct? Yes. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, I'm not sure what the what version of VCX is being used here. It might be uh, it might be it might be kind of old, but I guess it's still possible to run this. But yeah, anyway, just just to just make sure that you are aware. Like, surely you can run this. Um, and and I guess like if you want to use libvcx, you know, and 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 build start building for now. Uh, iOS slash Java application. Uh, on top of that, I, I think this can be a good starting point, but uh, just be aware it's it's been done three years ago. And, and since then, there has been, I think not terribly a lot, but some, uh, some like breaking changes in the API. So if you then go ahead and update VCX in this demo, I guess you would run into uh, some, uh, some uh, instances where, uh, some some issues where you would have to like tweak the APIs and kind of just update the stuff to 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 use the latest version. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's your what's your thoughts on the uh, Uni FFI? Uh, if, if you if you have any or if you, if you had time to kind of con consider it, because basically, you know, the, the approach we recommend as as we state on the on the main uh, main page is uh is is to rather use you know if, if you are kind of committing like long term to build some sort of wallet application and you want to have it native there's much much better approach is to use uh uni ffi aries vcx but that's really just in diapers right now so like uh if someone decides to go with that like there's significant investment which must be done to to kind of uh you know get this to more production ready state and actually we have a we have a mentee you know as a part of the mentorship uh, program uh Swapnil is on the call uh, with us who's uh who's working exactly on this kind of uh taking taking the uni ffi wrapper this poc from poc state to to something you know uh at next stage maybe not not production ready right of the bed but uh definitely uh something more a demo demoable than just poc because currently it's 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 very early early stage did you have a chance to have a look at it yeah i saw it uh, yesterday but uh, there is no documentation or anything is there yet i know that it is in progress so once it will be in a stable stage then definitely i will try it out but uh, mm -hmm. currently the so uh, there is no documentation or steps to use it at the moment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's more like, uh, you know, it, it's kind of just a first stepping stone in building it. And like, basically, if you want to, if you would want to go down this route, you would have to literally, you know, that would be the part of work to be done is to actually build a documentation and kind of just figure it out. How should it work and design the whole stuff and, and, and build it? But uh, it, it depends on your, you know, and kind of end game and 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 your resources and stuff like that. It's definitely easier to kind of uh, get something, I guess, done with LibVCX today. But uh, yeah, it's it's not a great long term investment. So it just it just depends on on your situation. Right. Correct. So I guess uh, I should uh, do the LibVCX for now to uh, brush up my fundamentals first. And uh, once I will be comfortable, then definitely I will uh, spend better 
I'm on uni Unifi areas. So uh, yeah, for a few days, I will be uh, fixing the live VCX issues and trying to implement the uh, working demo with uh, with the wallet. Mm -hmm. And uh, then as a long term, I, I understand that I should use the Unify areas VCX. So mm -hmm. let me clarify some of my fundamentals and uh, basic steps. Then I will be able to uh, contribute in the Unify areas VCX. All right, all right. If you would have, you know, if you would make actually uh, improvements to the, you know, this V6 demo iOS, it would be amazing if you can update it, you know, if, if you update the version or do some improvements, like yeah. this being kind of, uh, un, you know, uh, under, and it's now under layer of dust, nobody touched it for three years. So if, if there's improvements you do to this, it'll be valuable if you can contribute a pull request here. It's It's under... It's under uh, uh, it's this under this Korean organization. I'm not sure if they maintain it. But if you if 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 yeah, I'm not sure. But maybe if if they don't, you can just fork it and you know do a new new version. Then we could uh, then we could link it from the main repo. Like hey, this is an updated version for for the V6 demo. Hey, um, I was I was wondering as well. Um, hey, I'm, I'm George. Just by the way, I was the one responding to your Discord messages. Um, I was wondering uh, where you got the provision values from. You know, the IP address and and all that. Is that something you're running? No, it's not running uh, for me at the moment. So yeah, I'm following your uh, suggestions. So I will. I need to create some. Uh, I need to um, uh, use the mediator first I start mediator first in uh, some public IP and uh, mm -hmm. then only I will uh, be able to get the correct IP address and all the credentials so for now I just copied some of my uh, in, from my invite URL I copied some data from there but it is not working so um, now I'm trying to uh, generate some uh, means use the public IP and uh, uh, run the mediator on this IP uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to catch the, all the required parameters cool yeah it sounds like that would get it going um but then yeah there's all the issues with the maintenance of it and whatnot um yeah yeah is there a is a question for patrick but is there a public instance of the mediator running anywhere um, yeah so we definitely had it and i'm not 100 percent right right now if it's currently up and running uh mm -hmm. But that might save uh, save a lot of hassle to people trying out the first time. Uh, so I'll check that, and um, I'll check that right after the meeting, and uh, update on 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 this card. So if yes, uh, Abhishek, we could we might actually be able to provide you a like kind of you know a, a functional deployment of uh, the mediator, so you don't have to bother running it yourself. At least yeah. for the starter. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, let's go. Uh, let's go on the next. Amira. Uh, at least the EC2 EC2 instance which uh, runs the uh, the agents is running. I'm not sure if it's like fully exposed or working mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll, we'll check that. So I'll put a like a to do to do note here. Uh, after meeting, do check public instance. Okay. Um, yeah. So next up, we have a uh, like mentorship update. So uh, we have started a mentorship program uh, about a month ago, and since that, it was like kind of onboarding uh, transition and stage and. We're putting together the kind of a project uh, plans. So we have two projects, uh, Mediator, uh, which would be uh, Aries, uh, Aries compliant Mediator, uh, written in Rust, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, uh, basically written from scratch. Um, and we have second project, uh, a UniFi. Uh, we already mentioned the Unify uh, wrapper, Aries V6 wrapper. 
um, and we have the the respective mentees uh, on the call as well. So um, we have uh, Nayan for the mediator and Swapnil for the Unif five. So yeah, if, if you guys can just like give a short, you know, two one one like I don't know thirty seconds or one minute, two minute, whatever you want, uh, kind of upgrade update on what's your what's your status you know what what you've been up to so far uh, in terms of the the project and the high uh, and, and the mentorship and and what's kind of like uh you know your your next steps uh going ahead um yes hi um i'm nayan i'm under this mentorship at Aries VCX team. Uh, I'm working on the Aries Mediator project, which is, I think, previously also called Agency. They're similar roles. Basically, it's a Dropbox kind of service where people can drop messages for you, which your agent can later pick. So for example, uh, mobile devices can use this to get messages when they're offline or when they face network interruptions or when they're switched off. So they can just assign a mediator and the mediator can store messages for them. So Aries VCX currently doesn't have a Rust-based mediator. There is a Node.js-based mediator, VCX agency node. I am building a fresh Rust-based mediator for the Aries VCX project. That's my task for this mentorship. So over the last uh, two to three weeks, uh, that's when we started our mentorship, me and Swapnil. So I have been up to a few things. Firstly, there was onboarding from Hyperledger and the Aries VCX team. Then I also personally was trying to get comfortable with the Hyperledger ecosystem. I attended random meetings and just popped in and tried to get an idea of what people do at Hyperledger. Then on the development side, the last two weeks, uh, we have been busy trying to set up the VCX development environment. It starts easy at first, building uh, the project and running the unit test, but with integration tests, uh, it gets a bit tricky. So we were a bit stuck regarding that for a while, but thankfully with Swapnil and the team's help, we finally resolved those issues. And I think yesterday I got uh, greens on the integrations test. So yes, now I think hopefully we are in a good state to start working on the Aries VCX repo. I've also been looking into and researching frameworks that would be suitable for the project. Since the mediator is a web service, I've been looking at Rust-based web frameworks for this project. Uh, which satisfy the requirements that we have for Aries Mediator. So Patrick described some requirements, which are mainly horizontal scalability, performance, and the ability to use web sockets. So web sockets for being able to communicate with mobile devices using very less uh, battery life or energy. So these were the main requirements and I've been looking into web frameworks that satisfy these. Hopefully by next week, we'll have a final selection. So yes, uh, that's my status until now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, that was very uh, like clear and concise. Uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, maybe now, now we can turn to the, uh, the other project, Sopno. Your floor is yours. Oh, okay, uh, hi everyone. And first of all, thanks, Nayan, for a, a beautiful introduction. It was very uh, concise. So I'm presently working on the Unify uh, front, and I'm really glad that uh, uh, someone else, uh, the uh, the bulk of this project will be helpful to, uh, to at least to some people. So Abhishek, I think uh, when once we are done with this project, uh, I think we are able to supply some things that are helpful helpful to you. So uh, my project is uh, is around developing an API uh, around the Aries VCX uh, that enables development for mobile devices, and especially in Kotlin and Swift because that is what Unify currently supports, uh, and also Python. But we're not uh, concerned with that uh, for the moment. Uh, so 
for this project uh, in these weeks uh, building up for this project i have been working on uh, setting up the de development environment uh, like anand said that uh, the integration tests are a bit finicky uh, when it comes so uh, so I, we have been setting up that and i think uh, nan uh, uh, gave me some uh, scripts that were able to uh, that uh, made, that made things easier for me as well so uh, and in the uh, in the past few weeks i've been working on uh, on uh, on a demo application uh, using unify and getting things uh, up and running with the uh, current state of ADS VCX uh, Unify wrapper. So building up to that, uh, I did a few templates. Uh, this was inspired basically because uh, the uh, IntelliJ has the support for adding these uh, these small templates uh, that you can use for this project. So I decided to do a, a couple of those. So I will drop the links for those uh, templates and for the application if uh, anything finds that anyone finds that useful and that was my build up to uh, presently where i am and the further in the coming weeks i will be starting uh, developing uh, the library itself and developing a demo application that will go along with these uh, along with the development of uh, the unifier app curve so uh, this will be my project awesome thank you very nice um yeah it's also it's also great to hear that you you guys are like um you know helping each other uh back and forth so um it's not, you are not only working with us but also uh help each other together as, as mentees and and these two projects are highly related and kind of uh coupled in some sense i mean not coupled but uh, definitely there's an integration point between them so so as uh, so a co cooperation will be very can be very like uh fruitful and helpful for the for the final final state of uh state of things uh well that would be i guess our like initial uh initial meeting discussion um and now to the kind of uh uh the the usual usual program so uh just reviewing the work and thinking about what to do next and so uh we didn't have like uh a, a tons of stuff tons of stuff uh i think since since last uh week but we have uh completed the uh, peer did implementation uh i think Mero maybe last week you already uh i guess talked about it i don't know is there is there, is there something you would like to you know uh, say about this work uh, I don't want to repeat you know what you might be possibly talking about last week so yeah we have we have spoken about the motivation for this um, for implementing support for peer date uh, three uh, previous or peer dates in general uh, on the previous call um, and um, as you said like the the implementation is now is now um, done finished it it's about uh constructing resolving parsing serializing deserializing and like overall working with peer dates uh which will be which is necessary uh due to the like um coordinated community-wide um uh, move away from unqualified peer dates uh to to all unqualified dates, sorry, to peer dates. Um, so yeah, that, that that's about it. Like the implementation, of course, like it's it's um, it's not being used anywhere yet. So it's it's just an initial implementation which uh, may change depending on the on the use case when it's full, fully integrated uh, into into various VCX. Right. And and did and... exchange specifically, which uh, which yeah. is where we will start uh which which will be the first place where it will be used. And uh that that is another piece of work which is um uh, underway right now. Yeah that's right. We have a item here it's a war in progress as uh, the exchange protocol uh yeah we we are we are also since we are at it kind of jumping uh back and forth a little bit but it's fine 
we are also doing that like uh, following our uh, new new state machine implementation guide guidelines so that implementation will be io less and using the state pattern as as it is now or also but uh, it will be additional additionally using the io uh, kind of io less principle so that'll be exciting lots of goodies coming uh, with the did exchange and and so did exchange will be coming with a uh, uh, peer dips and if i'm not mistaken also integration of the of the new uh, did document right that's that's correct yes right awesome Okay, now back to uh, back to the main point. Uh, we are going through uh, the the work done since last week. Um, one more thing, which uh, is like largely done, uh, is like test refactoring. I've been working on myself for well, it's been it's been dragging out for a while. Then I went on the whole day and the work left undone. But uh, over the course of the past few days, I I kind of uh, drove it to completion. Um, so there's a PR ready, uh, PR ready for review. It has lots of things squashed into it, but it's usually like small changes. Um, uh, so the delta, delta is quite high, but I was looking through it like myself. And, um, honestly, I think it's not uh, too difficult, um, too, too, too hard to review is, is many of the changes are very trivial. Uh, but to kind of like go over over the things uh, which I done here and why I think it's cool is uh, is like so first of all uh, previously there has been places where we hard coded uh, basically the 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 underlying implementation we use so for example uh, we had. In, we have lots of Ellis slash Faber integration tests. And previously, I'll show you an example here. Test uh, setup. Uh, yeah, we had kind of different ways of constructing Ellis and Faber. And uh, the difference was that the Ellis was kind of dynamically built. This function always dynamically built. Alice's components, her credits implementation, like her unknown credits implementation and ledger client implementation based on the features. Whereas with Faber, it was hard coded so that uh, previously, uh, where is it? Previously, Faber was, I think, always using the, the in the, uh, the VDR tools. Uh, implementations and so when you then run integration tests with with uh, kind of credx feature flag then yeah you would run Alice with you would run Alice with credx but it wouldn't really run the faber side of thing with with credx and this pr is uh, adopting the same approach for Alice and for faber so it's introducing similar like we had a function create Alice. uh we have now create create Faber and even more like uh, even further um, and this applies for both Ellis and uh, both Ellis and Faber um, the way of building their their profiles they're using is um, is reusing the setup profile kind of testing tool I don't know testing helper struct we had so um, so there's no like duplication. There's only one way really we are setting up all of our integration tests. Previously, Alice was being, yeah, Alice was kind of dynamically, uh, you know, the selection of profile was dynamic. Uh, let me find it, Alice. Uh, it's hard to find Alice. Ah, uh, there it is. Um, so when Ellis was being built, ah, uh, this is this is a new code. Sorry, what I'm looking for. 
is in this old seemingly deleted file. Uh, Impul Faber, Impul Alice. Yeah, so previously we had our own custom way here of like looking at the feature flags and then setting it up. We had like custom function here. So instead of that, now when we build both Alice and Faber, the way we do it is that we always reuse this uh, setup profile. Uh, it's in that setup in dev setup uh, file. Mm, is it this one? Yeah, in this the dev setup, we had this setup profile, and that's literally the thing which is like looking at the feature flags and then constructing the profile accordingly, uh, combining the, the library, the, the components with the respective implementations. And so this is now like literally used for all of the integration tests, whether it is using Alice or not, you know, whether it's whether it's Alice Faber test or and whether it's Alice or Faber or just just this is the, the canonical way how to, you know, how to dynamically build the components for any uh, integration tests. Uh, so this was like one significant improvement in Aries VCX testing, just kind of unifying everything and like using the same approach and one way of initializing library. Uh, second, like significant thing was you know, there are the changes in libvcx core. Uh, and that's uh, basically enabling libvcx core and there's for technically also the libvcx itself and vcx NAPI RS, Node.js wrapper, uh, to run, run, run the library with different combination, uh, like different implementations. Uh, this was more of a preliminary work to make that happen. Uh, but there's another PR build on top of this, which is harnessing these changes. And uh, let me let me find that. I'll pull it up. Um, yeah, so we have one more small PR on top of that, which is introducing feature flags to Livy CX um, and to the Node.js wrapper as well to kind of opt into whatever implementation you, you want to use. And you can you can even select that granularly. So you can, you know, you can choose to use uh, let's say in the VDR ledger client, uh, let's say you know, VDR tools ledger client and anon creds, uh, like credx implementation for anon creds, or you know, any other combination. So yeah, this this was now fairly easy to do uh, with the with the changes layout in the previous PR. Uh, and uh, it's running in CI now with, uh, you know, two different combinations. The tests are passing. So we finally like tested uh, on a libvcx level as well, kind of additional, I guess, level of confidence that things are working. Uh, tested both with, uh, with uh, Credex and with uh, the old legacy implementation uh, VDR tools. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what I've been up to here um, and essentially what I'm still busy with. Uh, I I still need to update LibvCX to try to run, uh, to use in the VDR as a ledger client instead of VDR tools. Uh, and that's most of the stuff we have here, uh, except uh, the migrations. And for migrations, that's in the hands of Bogdan. So how is it going there? As annoying as ever. Uh, essentially, I, I remember that I've been talking with uh, Mira in the past couple of calls these past few weeks. And I, I was so afraid I'm going to jinx this because it all appeared to be so easy. Um, and I'm gonna jokingly say that you can, you came around and uh, and spoiled it all up. Essentially, the scenario that you proposed it, it was um, it's kind of surfacing some stuff that 
I'm not really sure what, why it's not behaving properly, but it's not. So um, it's a joke. It's obviously a good thing that we caught this. Um, so there were a couple of things. Um, one thing was that in VDR tools, the developers, for some reason, were storing the uh, registry deltas with a non-intuitive key, and it didn't seem like something important, so I didn't include it in migration. Sorry, in the migration. Um, so that's one thing that surfaced, but that actually came as I was debugging the previous issue, uh, or I realized that as I was debugging the previous issue. And the issue is that after the migration is done, um, when credentials are issued, something doesn't match in in Ursa. So, and, and I, I frankly have little to no idea what because all the values are encrypted they're always changing and there's really not an easy way to troubleshoot what's wrong but it's i tracked it down to basically some check in ursa um and it it's mainly either related to how the credentials are issued and maybe something not matching there, we're not getting generated properly, which would seem fairly odd because when like the credits profile was not like that was already there, it's been tested, it technically works. So when credentials are issued from credits, like when you start the test from the credits profile, everything works. But when you migrate in the middle and you wanna issue another credential, essentially the credential gets issued, but the prover or, or the holder doesn't accept it because some checks, some encryption checks fail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and mm -hmm. like I said, I'm, I'm not even entirely sure um, why that is happening. And I've been chasing this down for the past couple of days um and today is pretty much going to be the same thing um but it feels like this is the last mile hopefully uh, i don't want to jinx it more mm -hmm. um yeah well uh yeah. i think so, if, if, if it will be like if you know if it would be like uh really problematic or cryptic to like we cannot we cannot get it we cannot get past this because it's not a scenario you want to um, like it's it's not even about publishing the revocation registry or the deltas. So that's not the issue. I tried that. It's just that after the migration, whether the registry is published or not, or the deltas are published or not, that credential check still fails. So we cannot get past it and say that, OK, we're just going to push everything to the ledger before the migration and then do the migration and then move on with our lives. We but, can't. But uh, yeah, th there is kind of like, you know, non-technical solution to this um, is that you say like the migrate, we can say a migration strategy for, for this is that after the migration, you, 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 you know, you can't continue issuing on top of old credential definitions and instead you have to like i guess just just build a new ones and start issuing from those and uh, that way you don't really have to solve it you know on technical level but we would still definitely have to still support their vocations but perhaps we you know we can say like you know we don't support uh issuance post migration and given the fact that i think there's not uh, like uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any other issuers other than ourselves right now uh I think it's like you know acceptable like solution as far as we can we ourselves can can accept that and I, I guess we might if, if it's too cumbersome to like figure out some cryptic uh, or you know some. Uh, I mean the the, the Ursa stuff is I believe impossible to figure out like that's mm -hmm. the point of it right, um, but I don't know if shoving this under the rug is really a good idea. Um, because like i said it might um it might point out that there's an issue within the migration itself or maybe when the credential is issued um so i i wouldn't really just disregard mm. this like that mm. okay now let's give it some time then to try to try to solve it uh properly 
have you um i don't know if this will help at all but have you looked at existing migration scripts um like i know akapai uh went through this migration at one point in time uh, i wonder if they I did it. i did but i i haven't noticed that he did anything special right um so i'm i'm not really sure what the issue is which again kind of points or it kind of makes me wonder whether the like the issuer uh, issuing credentials is the problem and whether I messed up something there uh, in the credits profile. Uh, I don't know. Um, there was there there's like a, there is a small oversight regarding the like did qualification, but it's not applicable here. Um, that's basically something to take care of in, in the future, maybe in the next PR. It's something really small um but again it's not it's not the issue here um yeah no i'm i'm <laughs> if you if you i don't know, think of any ideas i'm more than willing to listen so uh, in the meantime i think i posted some message on on the maintainers chat essentially i'm gonna try and track down uh all those leads um particularly let me see if I can find that message. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I said, it's either something that gets messed up during the migration itself, which didn't, doesn't really seem like the case, but who knows. Um, and, or it might be the case that something within the test environment, like in the test itself, um, I don't know, maybe there's some static stuff that kind of messes things up. Uh, that also doesn't really seem likely, but again, I, I don't really know. Um, and so maybe small, small idea from myself here is like, try if see if it makes any difference after you do an, after you do the migration, you cannot issue the credential, right? So try to make a new revocation registry and try to issue against that and so maybe if it somehow if if, if there's a problem with migration which relates to the revocation registry itself then maybe if you rotate it it will work you know i guess that could point towards something but then if it doesn't work re regardless of whether you use new or old uh uh like a uh, revocation registry then it might be something to do with uh like credential definition migration migration perhaps or something more general or shared yeah it's not a bad idea i was thinking or rather wondering um when we test and we set up the indie pool and whatnot what if because the, i i believe that the credential data and the credential definition data that's static within the tests aren't they mm. well yeah like you some ids the... and stuff i was wondering whether if i try to uh because i cannot decipher the encrypted values but um like if i clear everything out after i run a test let's say without a migration take note of the values and basically reset the entire environment and try to run it again with the migration. I'm wondering whether the values might be similar, you know, across the steps. Um, but I don't know if something is dynamically generated. It probably is. Um, mm, some things probably are. And the key, yeah, okay. the crypto stuff, definitely, there's lots of like some, some rand, like, uh, random, like yeah, random. Well, then uh, yeah i'll um it, it's a good idea with rotating the revocation registry and try and do that too um but yeah it's pretty much just a, a needle in a haystack kind of thing mm. and I, i'm i'm not going to be surprised if it's going to end up being something really really small but yeah, uh, yeah it usually ends up like that Okay, um, well, I guess, uh, I don't know, I, I have a work ahead empty. I couldn't figure out what to like put here. Um, 
because we are already busy with like lots of things uh, in progress. So, and the the exchange is kind of big, and this migration might take a little while. And I'm myself busy with the like uh, libvcx, uh, kind of integrating those uh, modular libraries in libvcx. But I guess like, uh, well. Kind of things which will come after that, uh, and it was uh, I think it was included in the notes for the last meeting uh, you did uh, without me. Um, that was the the C CLI demo, and then we had state pattern. It's been it's been here for a while, uh, but nevertheless, it's still there. It's like one of the top priorities, I think. And what else? um ah uh, maybe the the harness uh uh 80 was it aries test harness what's the abbreviation a t a a a t h a t h um uh test or update back channel channel update uh i guess that's hard kind of the main points yeah i'm, I'm hoping to have a go at the cli demo uh in the next week i think i'll start with um making that dummy relay or, or mediator implementation that we talked about mm. um because i think that might be helpful to uh swap nil maybe for some of the tests that Mm -hmm. he might want to be running on the wallet right right so uh, how would that roughly work it will be some small http server which can just receive messages and there's some simple way to ah uh, you already outlined something i think some yeah some simple MPI. i've made one before just you know imagine like a simple queuing system a queue of messages mm -hmm. under an id and not secure or anything but yeah good work testing locally yeah, yeah yeah right right yeah that sounds like a good start all right folks uh we came to the last point which is a meeting discussion all right have an, an, do we have anything else to discuss Well, it seems like it seems like not, so which is fine. Uh, so we can wrap it up. Um, thank you all for joining in. Um, have a wonderful day and rest of the week as well. See you. Thanks. See you next you week too. again. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good one. See you guys. Bye. Bye.